Hello and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. We are going to continue the series where I put together a beta community tank and I follow a particular protocol that I've developed a couple years back from observing my bettas to help reduce aggression and kind of figure out what is the best combination for your fish when you're adding them together as well as not overwhelming your betta. And I've talked about this in the previous video, so definitely check those out. They will be at the end of the video as well as in the comments down below. So my giant Nemo tiger koi is ready to be released with his tank mates. He's had some time in the breeder box to not only acclimate to the tank, but also acclimate to his tank mates. And while you can see he's interested in them, he hasn't been flaring at them or showing any aggression, and that is a good sign. So I'm gonna move some stuff out of the way and release the big boy into his very big and awesome home. So dum 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 boom 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 drum roll and there he is he's gently been released into the tank and now the fun part begins of observing his interactions his behavior as well as the behavior of his tank mates to then figure out if this is a good combination or not if this tank will not work i do have a backup tank where i can remove him and place him in so i'm not too worried because you have to keep in mind that all bettas are individuals and they'll have much different personalities and you will have to adjust to their personalities. Some will be super aggressive murder fish and will just want to just go after everybody and anybody that's in the tank. And some fish will be much more gentle. As I've noticed with this guy, he's not very aggressive, which is really nice. But this also means that I have to be on the lookout for his tank mates and ensure that they are also not going to harass him, nip him, or stress him out. So here he is exploring the entire tank. This this is why I highly encourage a fully planted tank when you are making a community tank with lots of hiding spots. This is very natural for bettas as bettas are actually pretty much solitary ambush predators. They spend a lot of time hiding in different areas and kind of waiting for their prey because they are hunters and carnivores. Now, of course, these are domesticated fish, so they are not gonna be like their wild counterparts, but we can still take some inspiration from what I've learned in keeping different types of wild type bettas. And one thing I've observed is they don't like really strong light. So I definitely use a weaker like on this tank, which he really likes. They like a lot of hiding spots and a lot of thickly planted plants. This makes them feel very safe and they don't like too much chaos in the tank. Now I am a little worried about the blue tail tetras that you could see swimming around him because they are kind of very high energy fish and they do kind of nip each other and swim frantically sometimes. But after observing them for a prolonged period of time, I realized that that aggression seems to only be directed at their same species. So blue tetras will chase other blue tetras. They leave the cardinal tetras alone and so far have not shown any interest in the betta as well, which is a good sign. That being said, I will continue to closely observe the tank just to see if anything changes as everyone kind of acclimates and gets comfortable with each other. That's one of the uh, tips I picked up from visiting zoos. I've often seen zookeepers uh, kind of stand there next to an exhibit with their little clipboard, taking notes and observing the animals. And I noticed that they take really detailed notes and spend a lot of time observing the behavior of the animals. This in turn will allow them to adjust their care techniques and how they um, manage their animals in the future. And I think this is very important for your fish tanks as well. Sometimes I've seen people just put together a fish tank and then just kind of let it be, do water changes and feed it. And you look at it whenever you have a spare moment. But when you're looking at it, you're just casually looking at it. You're not really trying to pay close attention and observe specific things. And I think that we should do that a, a lot more because that will help teach us how to make better choices. Also, I want to note that he can no longer see the females because I did put some uh, paper, construction paper. That's what you see, the green paper in between the two tanks. I did that because not only I didn't want him to spend too much time flaring because he already has a slightly bent gill plate because he was flaring at the uh, Aquashella where I got him from for like a whole three days, I think. So that, that was a 
too much flaring for him. So for now, no flaring for this boy, but it's kind of better for him. His gill plate has been sort of starting to slowly flatten out. I don't know if it will ever completely flatten out, but it's looking better and better every day. So blocking off and not allowing him to see the females will help with that, but also it will help not trigger any spawning behavior because that in turn increases aggression in a beta and more aggression means more territorial behavior, which would mean that he would start to see his tank mates as potential threats. So that's why no girls, he's not gonna be able to see them, but that is okay because he's still having a ton of mental stimulation within the tank itself. We have to make good choices when we put our tanks next to each other and sometimes when fish can see other fish in the tank, that can be a good thing. It can be really great stimulation, but sometimes in the case of these girls next door, it can be a bad idea. So this is why I blocked him off. Now he can see the African cichlids that are in the tank next door, the Placidochromis Jalo, but he hasn't been flaring at them. He's just been kind of checking them out. They're quite large fish, so they don't really intimidate him. They've just been sort of looking at each other, but I did notice that he does spend more time looking at them. So if they do pretty much stress him out in any way, I am totally cool with blocking that side of the tank as well, but I'm just gonna see what happens. Now, while I did mention that a lot of stimulation for bettas is good, as they are quite inquisitive fish, you also, when you put together a tank, wanna make sure that a betta is not overstimulated either, because a lot of them, especially depending on where they're from, They've been spending a lot of time growing out in their little jar. They're just jarred. There's nothing happening in the jar. It's a very like sterile, boring environment. So sometimes a betta can be very easily overwhelmed. So that's another reason you want to observe your fish and pay close attention. Now, I also know that some of you guys will probably be very busy. Maybe you know, you're know you leading very busy lives and you don't always have the time to observe your fish for as long as you would have liked, especially at the beginning. It depends on your schedule. So one thing you can do is set up a time lapse or just film for an extended period of time and walk away. In this case, I just set up my camera on a tripod and I was doing fish chores in between. And then I sped up the footage so that I can observe some of the swimming patterns of the fish as well as see if there is any aggression that I might have missed. Uh, one thing you have to keep in mind, the fish sometimes will behave a little differently when you're right next to the tank because they associate you with food, so they might be getting excited or begging for food. I might not be exhibiting behavior, like kind of relaxing behaviors or other behaviors that normally would happen over time when you're not feeding them. So when you walk away, sometimes fish can act differently. So filming a little time lapse, even if it's on your phone and just speeding it up just to see what happens when you're away, it's another cool thing to observe. In this case, I saw that he did posture and do kind of like a half flare at the cichlids. He's spending a lot of time checking out the perimeter of the tank. So definitely this is a big territory that he spending a lot of time patrolling but I noticed that he's not spending a lot of time paying attention to the tetras at all they're actually being ignored and they are ignoring him as well and this is a very very good sign I also want to see you know is he taking a lot of breaks and relaxing because you don't want to see frantic swimming as well but these are all so far good signs and I'm glad that I was able to document this and share this with you as well so so far things are looking great and I will be updating you in the future to see how this guy does. See, he gets along with everybody even when they're at the top of the tank. Everyone's kind of leaving each other alone and that's really awesome. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, be sure to share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out any future videos. Thank you and have a nice day!